Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever the hell you guys are located in this crazy world. <laughs> it's only going to get crazier. That's just the way it is. I'm Al Ditton. I'm with Underground Noise Webzine. Tonight, I've got the pleasure to have a portion of time with a band called Catharia. I'm here with Nick Kiefer, Matt Powell, and Dylan. Welcome, gentlemen. How are you guys doing tonight? Oh, we're doing great. How are you? Oh, I can't complain. Life is fantastic. We got sunshine, but it's a little bit cool here in Macon, Georgia. I'm doing good. We had a little bit of snow here in uh, Indiana the uh, first time, uh, just started a couple days ago. I say, yeah, it actually stuck this time. I was surprised. Perfect for black metal pictures. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> A little nostalgia in that, you know, dead yeah. trees everywhere. Absolutely. What more can you ask for? <clears throat> That's pretty much how a band logo looks nowadays to some people, like a bunch of twigs put together and you're trying to decipher the name of it. <laughs> this one's harder this. to read, the better it is. Well, the next time I see that picture, I'm going to say this band's called Snap Twig. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that would turn some heads. Who knows? I mean, that's kind of catchy if you ask me. But uh, the first question I would like to ask you, gentlemen, is what sparked you guys to be musicians? Hmm. Who wants to go first? That's it. <laughs> go ahead first. Go ahead and go, uh, Dylan. That's fine. Yeah, I, I kind of have an answer ready off the top of my head if you guys <laughs> want to think about it. Um, I mean, I started playing guitar. When I was in middle school, um, the first, I, this is going to be funny, but the first Guitar Hero game had come out and that introduced me some really cool music and it's just a path of never stopped going down, I guess. But I started playing guitar and uh, after playing guitar for several years, I picked up the bass as well. And now I'm here. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, I would probably have a somewhat similar experience, minus the Guitar Hero part. <laughs> um, yeah, just growing up, um, I listened to quite a few of the uh, alternative bands and stuff like Zeppelin and Sabbath and stuff like that that my brother was into. Um, I didn't actually start playing guitar until uh, my later teenage years. Um, I just wanted to do uh, uh, some covers of the bands that I was listening to at the time. Um, and then from there, you know, I started getting more and more into uh, metal. It started with, you know, the stuff like Metallica's early stuff and then uh, Sabbath. And then it just gradually got heavier and heavier from that point onwards. Um, some point picked up bass as well. Um, Listen to just like a lot of Lamb of God and Trivium and stuff like that in my mid-20s. And then uh, by the time I think I was in my... Uh, mid to late twenties, I was definitely more into uh, just black and death metal was things that I was truly interested in and wanted to play and uh, get better at playing. Sounds like it's my turn. Um, well, my dad was a metalhead growing up and he would always kind of play like the first five seconds of the song and I'd have to go and guess what it was. And, you know, grew up listening to a lot of Pantera and stuff like that, but what really got me into music was I started out on saxophone in middle school and just kind of always really liked playing that, but got in progressively into the heavier stuff and, you know, got into the screaming. I was like, well, holy hell, how did they do that? I want to figure out how to do that. And it was just a YouTube rabbit hole from there. And now we kind of, here we are. That's really cool. My second question is, who are your influences? For me, lyrically, I listened to um, a bunch of Death Haven or Death Heaven and um, started getting more into like UADA. And um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, Wizja Dude, they're one of the newer black metal groups out right now. and They're absolutely killing it. But, you know, I just try to be really descriptive with my stuff whenever I do try to write, kind of paint a picture with it. That's very cool. I never heard of that band that you mentioned just now. Yeah, you should definitely check them out. Their newest album's amazing. I'll take your word for it. How about you, Matt and Dylan? Um, 
influences a lot of it, like I said, kind of started from um, the uh, early thrash stuff, Slayer, Metallica, stuff like that. Randy Rhodes is probably my favorite guitar player of all time. Um, I thought he was absolutely amazing. He died way, way too young. He had so much potential um, for what he could have done. Um, but uh, probably my biggest influence for um, the last maybe decade, if not longer, has probably been uh, Bathory from Sweden. Um, liked them a lot. Um, Immortal um, Dissection has been um, something that I got into a few years ago. And I just like the way that they meshed um, death and black metal together, um, as well as their little instrumentals that they did. I thought were so, always so cool. They had these little classical guitar instrumentals that kind of, you know, broke up the albums that they did. Um, I just love that and the way that that sounded. All right, I guess it's uh, my turn. Um, and I guess it depends what you mean by influences. Like, like what do I, what do I listen to? What inspires me to write or or what do I take a little more seriously? Like, what do I? Yeah, pretty much what right inspires I'm playing. You. I'm sorry. Pretty much what inspires you. To oh, have music you write. I mean, honestly, I listen to all kinds of stuff outside of metal as well. Um, but as far as metal goes, I mean, I have to copy Matt. I'm huge into dissection. I, it's just a shame they only have three albums, but they're all very distinct and all have some really unique elements for black metal. And uh, yeah, so I really like them. And uh, for me, things kind of went progressively. Like nobody starts off listening to black metal, I don't think. No one starts off playing black metal. So for me, I kind of had a similar path. Um, I think I really started with like Iron Maiden and worked my way through like that classic uh, new wave British heavy metal type bands. And then I got a little heavier, got into the thrash and everything and the death. And then I think black probably followed somewhere after that. Um, I'm trying to think of who else influences me. I'm a giant Annihilator fan. I've Just never seen Jeff Annihilator. Oh, you you haven't? Oh <laughs> man, so good. Just I missed out from album. Do what? I'm missing out on a lot of this stuff, so I'm not fully up to date. You know, there's so many bands coming out of the woodworks left and right, and I'm just like, I'm sorry, I can't keep up with all you guys. <laughs> yeah, and I like it's been around for about probably 30 years. Um, if you like a certain sound they have. Don't get used to it because it's a completely different lineup and singer on every single album. Wow. <laughs> they never kept anything for more than one. So if you fall in love with a certain sound they have, or maybe you don't like a certain sound they have, move on to the next album and eventually you'll find the sound you're looking for. But I just, I love everything they've done. It's a very diverse catalog. That's really cool. I'll definitely take your word for that. And I'll definitely check that out. My favorite dissection album would be Storm of the Lights Bane. I think that's their best one. That is definitely their best one, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's their, Where Dead Angels Lie is just classic. It's may arguably be one of the best black death metal songs ever written, you know? <laughs> I play so that good. song about every time I pick up a guitar. Uh, Matt, I just realized we're repping the same shirt. <laughs> we are. <laughs> right on. We got all your mind. We got Nick over here being a traitor wearing his Lorna Shore shirt. I'm kidding. I'm not a traitor. I got it in the closet, man. I'll go snag it. You always can if you have the time. <laughs> anyway, my next question for you guys would be this. Uh, what what type of gear do you use to make your sound? Like what kind of guitar amps, guitars, microphone? Cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you, one of you guys want to go first? Yeah, um, I use for uh, Midnight Sun, um, the album that we just did, um, and most of my other recordings um, and bands that I've been in the past, a uh, Schecter, Schecter Hellraiser with EMG pickups. Um, besides that, um, I also use my uh, BC Rich Warlock. I think I actually probably played the Warlock a little bit more than the Schecter um, on Midnight Sun. It's got uh, Black Winter pickups, and then we just use the uh, plugins at the studio as far as uh, amps go. 
That's really awesome. What type of warlock is it? Is it a Nold warlock? It's a war beast, actually. Oh, you got it right there with you? Oh, yeah, I do, actually. Cool. Yeah, show it off. It's got those nice silver uh, bevels on it. Yeah, you got to check out this axe, man. That's sick. Oh, wow. Yeah, I love the uh, love the action on it. It's just great action. Uh, like I said, I had the pickups replaced, so it's got uh, these pickups in it. Uh, Seymour Duncan Black Winter. Um, they're just they're really good for uh, pickups that are not active, you know. Yeah, I a, lot use, of, a lot of tone. I use passive pickups myself, actually, and I yeah. I play a Kerry Kane Warlock. Oh, do you really nice? Yeah. yeah. I'm also on the BC Rich train. I, I have a bitch. It's over here. Um, actually, no, it's not. I lied. I put it away. But uh, so for me, I, I'm also a guitar player, but um, I'm not going to get into any of that since I play bass for Cathario. So for me, I've always really loved uh, the Stingray basses uh, from Music Man and Sterling and, uh, and the Yamaha broad basses, like what Michael... Anthony and Van Halen played for many years. I really like those. Um, when I joined Cathario, though, I just I felt really limited by a four string. So I recently picked this up. I love this guitar, dude. I really want to try Harley Benton. Yeah, this is a uh, Harley Benton, you know, P-style bass um, with a PJ pickup configuration on there. Um, five string. It's just right. Um, I tune it to kind of a unique tuning. I don't use a standard five string tuning. Uh, so the guitars in Cathario are drop C. Uh, for me on the bass though, I do C, D, hang on. <laughs> it confuses me talking about it. So my first string and my third, fourth and fifth are technically drop C. And then I've also, this one is tuned to D. So really, if you use these four strings, you have D standard. If you use this string plus these three, you have drop C. So it gives you a lot of range like that. Um, you know, sometimes this is just a little too low. So you play the same notes you want, but in a different register, you play it on the D instead for a little more clarity, I suppose. It is a beautiful bass, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I think the pick guard is really what what does it. It's got like this blood red tortoise shell type thing, and then the rest of it's just a uh, smooth matte black finish. I'm a huge fan of that type of finish. I have it on my Jackson Dinky over here as well, and then on my Yamaha Broad Base, it's also the same type of finish. Just super durable, and if you do get a chip out of it, it's easy enough to fix. That's really cool, Dylan. You took the words right out of my mouth because I was looking at that pick guard like that's one sick looking pick guard, but I don't know too many people that play bass with a pick unless you're Peter Steele from Typo Negative. But then again, <laughs> he, he used to play that stand-up bass, didn't he, for a while? I think so, I'm yeah. Think, I'm a pretty big Typo fan as well, but I don't remember if he did that. I know in a music video he did, but I don't know if that's actually what you're hearing on the recording or not. Yeah, it's hard to tell sometimes because watching the music video and then listening to the CD itself, it kind of throws the listener a little bit off. I guess that's this way that my ears want to perceive it, you know, but yeah, Typo Negative, what an amazing band that they were. There's no way to replace Peter Steele, that's for sure. Yeah. Do you like Carnivore as well? The I band? Before? Yeah. Carnivore. Really good dead. stuff. Really good stuff. Yeah. They have that a unique sound. There's like no top end. No sparkle to that sound. It is just thick and heavy and very low and mid rangey. It, it'll blow out a stereo if you got a weak one. Yeah, it's really raw, you know, to me, because it's just like, wow, this is so old school and that takes me back a few years. Like, how old am I again? <laughs> you know, <laughs> half the time I'm feeling like I'm 90 when I'm getting out of bed. I'm just like, do I have to do this again? Yes, you have to do it. <laughs> Otherwise, you're gonna be screwed. <laughs> but my next question is: uh, If you guys bring back one dead musician, who would it be? Oh shit, Chuck Schuldiner. Very, yeah, that's a good one. That's a very good for one. sure. Or John. Uh, 
I can't pronounce his last name. I'm not even going to try, but John from D Dissection. Um, I would probably say, for me personally, it'd be either uh, Randy Rhodes or uh, Orthon from Bathory. I'll, I'll take left field here. And actually, uh, Chris Cornell, he was a big one for me growing up. That was a huge one. Ooh, kind of on that same front. Um, dude from STP, um, help me out here. Yeah, oh, he that's recently. I can't think of his name. Like I used to be in a Stone Temple Pilots tribute band, so I feel <laughs> bad that the name's not coming to me. But uh, you know who I mean. They're yeah. singer. <laughs> yeah, he had a good voice. You know, Chris Cornell, when he was in Soundgarden, sounded amazing. Absolutely one of my favorites. That and a bunch of his covers are really good. He had one of, uh, oh, what is it? It's a Whitney Houston cover. Hang on. I had no idea. I, that, I had no idea that Chris <laughs> Cornell did a cover of Whitney Houston. That, yeah, that's man. Gonna, that's got to be something. Or no, it's not Whitney Houston. It's uh, Nothing Compares to You. I forget who originally did it, but holy Sinead crap. Yeah, that was Sinead O'Connor. She was that girl with okay. the bald head, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then she tears up in the video. I don't know if the tear was a real tear or an acting tear. <laughs> that would be a question for her, but at the same time, <laughs> I don't see myself interviewing that person anytime soon. So. <laughs> who knows? Maybe in the future it'll happen. It's just some little clear eyes magic. Yeah, yeah, that usually helps a lot. <laughs> My next question for you, gentlemen, would be what gives you energy to keep going, like when you're on stage? We're all too polite to go first. <laughs> <laughs> we are. Um, I can go first, um, I suppose. Um, I just think it's the way that, you know, music makes you feel. Um, I definitely get a huge adrenaline rush from listening to and playing metal, um, wherever that may be at. Um, I think it also, in, in many ways, has helped me personally overcome um, struggles in my personal life, uh, mental health issues and stuff like that. Uh, I swear, any time that I feel depressed, if I put on uh, some music, especially metal, it helps me overcome it. I think just the oneness of the environment, like everyone's there for that one thing for the music, just that whole type of energy of like being together is a big one for me. I really like that. I love going to shows. Am I good to go? Yes. <laughs> uh, so for me, man, I, I think there's only been a few shows in my life where something horrible didn't go wrong before the show. So for me, the feeling of actually finally getting there and putting on a great show, that feeling of overcoming and not, not giving up or pulling the plug before the show, the perseverance, that's, that's what drives me as far as playing live. Like I said, there's, there's always something that goes wrong. <laughs> I let's see if, a few years back, like my credit card got stolen before a show. So that was a oh. real hindrance. And it's, not, it's just something random. Or sometimes it's something musical. Actually, the very last show I played, our drummer pulled out less than five days before the show. <laughs> Ouch. So <laughs> I played that show with uh, a drum backing track. It's super scary going up there like that. You know, I, I love connecting with a real drummer, but it went perfect. And like I said, it uh, it gave me that feeling of overcoming and that feeling of power, being in control of the the fate of the show and everything. And that's that's what drives me as far as playing live. Didn't you, didn't you guys put a skeleton on for that? Oh yeah, yeah. We, we I, <laughs> yeah, I bought a plastic skeleton to stick behind the drum set, but uh, it passed out drunk. It face planted <laughs> into the drums in the middle of the song. So that was pretty funny. <laughs> I wish I could have seen that. I would have probably been like, come on, drum some more. 
He drummed himself oh, slack. into a skeleton. Imagine that. <laughs> He yeah, must, have actually... for the, uh, must have played for the mentors before that. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. Yep. What are you drinking over there, Nick? Matt, this is actually uh, just some sparkling water. Hardcore. <laughs> yeah. It's lemon lime. You know, I saw the can and I thought it was a Sprite, but I'm drinking my Mountain yep. Dew Fruit Quake today. Uh... Oh. I don't like a uh, fruit cake. Is that any good? If you don't like fruit cake, I'll be honest with you. It's actually pretty tasty. It tastes like fruit punch mixed with nutmeg and cinnamon. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've heard of that one. Yeah, it's the newest one that came out this year for uh, Christmas flavor. And then they're going nice. to replace it in January with one called Cobra Cane. It's going to be a peppermint flavor. Oh, I'll be down for that. Yeah, I'm just waiting for. Uh, the people at Pepsi and Mountain Dew to sponsor me for uh, do, just representing their soda in almost every interview. <laughs> I got pretty much Mountain Dew everything. so I can feel that stuff like dissolving my insides when I drink it, so I usually don't. <laughs> it's a lot of sugar, I'm not going to lie. That's, that stuff's I acidic. Food. I feel like my teeth are going to fall out every time I drink it. <laughs> Yeah, if you use it like mouthwash, then you're not doing it right. This guy is straight down. Here, um, let's freestyle tonight. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I can ad lib a little bit, so I'll add on a little here and there. That's funny though. My next question for you, gentlemen, would be: What is your local music scene like? Are there a lot of metal bands in your area? We have a handful, yeah. Like, um, there's this group called Fleshbore that's like a tech death. That's really cool. I love those guys. They're so cool. Um, there's a deathcore group called uh, Green Leaves. So there's a decent environment up in Indianapolis, and there's a couple like slower, more mellow groups here in Bloomington as well. But that's about as far as I've wandered out. I would just say here in Indy, well. Call Indianapolis, but as locals call it Indy, it's, it's definitely probably more punk than anything. Um, there's definitely a lot of uh, uh, core bands as well. As far as um, black metal goes, I don't know of too many other bands even within Indiana that are doing no uh, uh, black metal other than us. Um, there's a couple that uh, have mixed in with other genres. Um, there's definitely a big core scene. I think there's always been a pretty big core scene, whether that be hardcore, metalcore, deathcore. So my turn. <laughs> um, so it's kind of a mixed bag on this question. So actually, each of us live an hour from the other. So there's a perfect triangle in between the three of us. So it's an hour from me to Nick. It's an hour from me to Matt and vice versa. So we all live in this perfect one hour <clears throat> size triangle chunk of Indiana. So I guess we each have a different opinion on this. <clears throat> So for me, I live, I live in like South Central Indiana. Um, in my city, there's a giant punk scene that's starting to emerge. Uh, there was one several years ago that kind of died out, but now it's starting to come back. Some of the veterans of that scene and then some new folks are bringing it back. Um, but really, that's the only original music around my area. Um, other than that, if you play music, you're just you play in a bar cover band. That's all anybody wants. You know, no one comes to see original music. But like I said, it's starting to get better. Um, and then for Indiana as a whole, yeah, there's a there's a small metal scene here. I think the, the black metal scene is probably the least crowded of all the uh, metal subgenres. I, I mean, honestly, we're the only like black metal, black metal band that I can think of off the top of my head. Like Matt said, there are some black metal bands that are mixed with other genres. Uh, I recently befriended it. Yeah, <laughs> if I can talk, befriended a uh, a blackened thrash or maybe a thrashened black, more like uh, metal band called Vile Iniquity, and they're amazing. One of their members is from the same city as me, and they're also in the same boat. They all live an hour from each other in a big triangle. So. <laughs> I guess that's the thing. If you play black metal, you know, you can find people that are close enough, but not close. Yeah, that's really cool, though. 
Well, guys, we've got eight minutes left in this meeting. And uh, I was going to mention to you guys, there's a band that's from Illinois uh, known as Crusadist. I'm not sure if you're familiar with those guys, but they're like a death metal, black metal, and thrash metal, and a little touch of heavy metal in their music. Hmm. Cool. Yeah, I don't know if you guys ever heard of them or not, but I got to see them last year in Atlanta, and they put on an excellent show with Inhuman Condition. Oh, cool. I have to check them out. I haven't heard Very of them. Good. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah, got, them they got one album. Crusadist. Okay. It's basically, cool. it's basically a combination of the word crusader and sadist combined. So. Oh, I see. That's yeah. Are they from Chicago or are they from Illinois? <laughs> I think both. <laughs> Would it be possible to be from both. <laughs> <laughs> Anything yeah. south of Chicago is pretty barren. But there's actually quite a few metal bands. I think Waco Jesus is from, I want to say Carbondale, maybe. I remember those guys. Destruction of Commercial Scum. Yeah, I, I know those guys. Um, there's actually a real, I'll go ahead and plug this real quick. Um, in Southern Illinois, every year, there's a metal festival called Bull Terror Assault. It's really, really good, and it showcases a lot of uh, regional Midwest bands. Uh, Waco Jesus plays about every other year. And then there's some other folks from Illinois and surrounding states that play. So definitely worth checking out if you're ever up here in like September. Absolutely. I've heard of it before, but I've never been. So. Oh, it's so good. I just my list. Here. Yeah, it's definitely on my bucket list. So I'll make sure I make an appearance this one of these times that it happens. Well, I have two last questions for you guys before this ends. Um, and my next question would be, do you guys have any upcoming shows? Do we? <laughs> <laughs> Matt? Uh, we are trying to get on um, Michigan Metal Fest. Yeah, I sent off to work for that. So oh. wish us luck. <laughs> Uh, we're also trying to do West Virginia Metal Fest as well, but haven't heard anything. I hope it all works out for you guys. We had originally started, uh, I think that we were more focused on being like a, a studio-based project, but now, you know, there, there are um, drummers and stuff that are interested um, to play with us, and uh, we definitely want to start playing shows. That's like our, our next step now that we've got an album recorded. Um, we are working on um, a follow-up to that right now, too. We were just at the studio um, a few weeks ago and are make, already recording for uh, the next um, album, a follow-up to Midnight Sun. Uh, so we're really excited about that and getting that out there. That should be out uh, sometime next year. I don't have an exact date yet for mine. Um, we're still writing songs for it, but uh, we have already started recording for the next one. So That's we got really about three or four songs on it right now. It'll be a good one. That's awesome. I'll definitely have to check that out. Yeah. Well, my last question, gentlemen, is do you have any last words for Underground Noise Webzine? I just want to say thank you for having us. Um, we really do appreciate it. Um, and keep up what you're doing. I've watched some of your other YouTube videos. Um, uh, it's definitely turned me on to... Uh, a few new bands I probably would have never heard of, you know, um, I'm going to check out. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Most definitely, Matt. Nick, Dylan, you guys got any last words for me? You can go Not first really. if you want. Right? <laughs> I'll say no. Nah, I don't really know what else to say. Um, I do appreciate you guys having us on. Absolutely, but um, check out Katharia Midnight Sun. Really, you know. I will uh, put a link for it <laughs> in the video once you get this uploaded, and um, I'll send you, uh, Alexander, the uh, YouTube video for uh, Midnight Sun as soon as we get off here. Cool, very cool. Um, I would just say, you know, 
thank you for having us on here and uh thank you for what you do you're on a noble mission here showcasing some smaller bands like us so giving us the coverage we need absolutely you guys are welcome i'm glad you guys could be you guys could be a part of this so i appreciate your time today absolutely thank you thank you you're welcome guys most definitely